Hi everybody, Jane here, and today I am reviewing Mr. Lemoncello's Great Library Race. For any of you who follow my channel a while, you know that I am a huge Mr. Lemoncello fan. I'm going to kind of get you up to speed up to this book. There may be some minor spoilers for the books ahead of it. So if you've never read the series, I would go out and do that. <laughs> um, I do have reviews up for book one and book two. This is the third one in the series, and it's hard to talk about this without spoiling a little bit of the last two books. So I'm not going to go into huge spoilers, but slight spoilers. All right, so this book is about a library. There's a guy who is a game maker. His name is Luigi Lemoncello, and he grew up in this small town in Ohio, and he became this famous wealthy game maker. And in the desire to give back to his hometown, he buys, adopts, I'm not really sure, the library there. There hadn't been a working library since he was a child. It got closed down. So he brings the new library in and he very much updates it. It's very much interactive and gamish and fun. So in the first book, you had a group of children and Kyle was one of them. Kyle is kind of the main character throughout all these books who are shut in the library and they have to figure out these puzzles and whoever figures it out first wins this prize of being one of the sponsors of Mr. Lemoncello's brand. Kyle is hugely into gaming so he just he loves all things Lemoncello. He's not so much into books or into libraries but he loves video games and I do think that that is probably an attempt by the author to get, keep this book open to people who aren't book geeks. Like, I was able to really geek out on the first two books, but you also have Kyle who you can kind of follow and who is not as bookish and geeky as I am. So I do think that worked well. In book two, there's complaints by the rest of the world that, hey, these kids in this town got to participate in this test to see who would be a sponsor for Mr. Lemoncello, but Mr. Lemoncello is a huge brand. So anyway, he brings in a group of kids from all over the U.S. And the winners of that, and I guess here's the main spoiler, but it kind of affects this book, is that the winners of that become board members for the Lemoncello Library. So they become like the decision makers. So we get to the Great Library Race, and the board members are competing in a great library race. And Kyle joins in the competition, of course. While this race is going on, and to be honest, I have no idea now what originally the prize was. I think it's just supposed to be great, whatever it was. Oh, um, a new game. Mr. Lemoncello had a new game coming out, and they would get the first versions of it. And it was an emoji game, like it my understanding is it projects emojis and you figure out like what it is like it, Wizard of Oz is one of the ones that's shown in the book and they show like a lion a tiger you know they show like characters in emoji form anyway it doesn't matter because that is so minimally important to the story but the kids go through this great library race and as they are doing this we learn that a rival gaming company is trying to set up Mr. Lemoncello and bring down his credibility. And so eventually the kids get sidetracked from the race to earn these emoji games to proving that Mr. Lemoncello is acting ethically and has been acting ethically through the whole book or through the whole series and that he's a good guy and that the allegations against him from this other company are false. Book's main focus is on research and perseverance, which are both good themes. I don't think I've said this yet, so I'm going to stop and say this. I gave the first book and the second book a five out of five. The first one's theme, I think, was the love of libraries. The second was banned books and how information has to be, you know, free and available to everybody. I gave this book a four out of five. I did not like it nearly as much as the other two books. Still had a lot of the fun zaniness and the entertainment factor, which I read it for, but it, it wasn't as good. Um, one of my big complaints about this book, honestly, is that 
while the other ones, they, you had to suspend your disbelief a little bit, but they were still like in the realm of plausible-ish. This one was so out there that I just couldn't. I could not suspend my disbelief for this book. Like it was just too out there. I couldn't do it. So this is the first of the books in the series that really felt unbelievable to me. And like I was just sitting there going, there's no way. There's no way. This is ridiculous. Um, and this was the first one too that really felt to me like a middle grade book. Like a book written for kids. In the other ones, I'd heard and seen like reviews where people had said, oh, it was cool. I gave it to my kid. My kid liked it, but I didn't. I felt like it was a very young book for a young audience and not something an adult would enjoy. I totally disagreed with them because the first two books I really enjoyed despite being an adult. And yes, there is like some whimsical Willy Wonka type stuff happening, but they were still on the realm of believable and I could enjoy as an adult. This one I really had a struggle with because it definitely pushed the bounds of believability and it just, it felt for the first time really like a children's book. Now, in fairness, it is a children's book, so the fact that it feels like one is not something I can hugely give a negative to. It is exactly what it is meant to be. But my enjoyment as an adult reader was a lot less. Uh, it did still have all the things I love in the Lemoncello books, including like puzzles and facts and it, it's it's a lot of fun. You have a lot of fun stuff happening. You have a little bit of a mystery going on. It, it's not a bad book. It just, I did not enjoy it nearly as much as the first two. And I also felt like there was less interactions in this book than in some of the others. In the first book especially, there was puzzles throughout and you're trying to figure out the puzzles while Kyle and the other kids are figuring them out. And this one I felt was harder because you didn't have the information beforehand like with unless you are really well researched and knowledgeable about stuff you couldn't know a lot of the stuff that the kids were researching and trying to find out for this race whereas in the other ones there was it was a game it was games on the page and puzzles and you could kind of sort them out and i really enjoyed solving the puzzles along with the characters in the first book especially and in the second book, it had similar things where they gave you a lot of information and so it was easy to sort it out. But this one, I didn't feel like that was the same. I felt like I was much more watching than participating, which was kind of, kind of a downside. I do believe there's one more book in the series. I am going to read it because I love the first two books so much. And I'm hoping that this is just like the one book in the series that I'm not going to like as much. If you have read the series, obviously keep reading because, you know, you want to know what happens. They do um, get rid of one of the villains that has been in the series from the beginning because they're pains in the butt every time. Um, but yeah, so not bad. I just, it felt very young. There was a lot of crazy stuff that was happening that, again, in real life wouldn't happen. One scene in particular, they are writing these, I don't know, like book carrying things on a conveyor belt and they're writing them up and it's very action-y, but it's so, I don't know. It just, it just, I couldn't. I don't know why, because I feel like we've seen these things before, but I don't know if Kyle wrote in them in the first book. I don't know, but it just, this time around, it just seemed really, crazy and actiony and just uh, I just yeah I didn't love it didn't love it all right so if you've read the Mr. Lemoncello's books did you like this one as much as the others if this is not your least favorite in the series which one is also how is the fourth book is it closer to the original two first two or is it more like this one? Do you think I'm going to enjoy it? Or should I go into it with very low expectations? Let me know down in the comments what you think. And uh, my social media is below. And so is the like and subscribe button if you would like to connect with me or follow me. I would appreciate that, certainly. 
and I will see you next time where we will talk about a different book. Thanks, bye!